going on YouTube? Welcome back to the DOR show. This is a channel where we react to videos that we find on the internet. And today is no different. I got a crazy video for you guys. And today we're going to be talking about why being a nice guy does not benefit men. Right? Why being a nice guy is not something that you want to do. I, I'm, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with being a nice guy in, in the actual sense of the word. But when you put it in, in modern times, the way that we use the word nice guy, yeah, we know they finish last, right? So in this episode, we'll be talking about nice guys and how women are manipulating men, using them as place placeholders, right? They go and do their things and then they come back hoping that these men would would accept them. Anyways, I'm talking a lot. Let's dive right into this clip. Talk to me about the problem with nice guys. Essentially what nice guys do is what they suffer with is not that they're too nice or anything. It's just that they have incredibly weak boundaries when it comes to women. What they do is they blame the fact that they're so nice as to why they can't get women. But it's not about being nice. It's about a lack of masculinity. And one of the best ways to establish masculinity is placing boundaries. When you don't like a behavior, you don't roll over and allow it to continue and then give her more in order for you to get her. You set a boundary and you have a willingness to walk away. Nice Nice guys, what happens is they don't like to exert their boundaries and they don't have a willingness to walk away. So what ends up happening is their nice nature becomes a reason for resentment because women don't like it. They actually feel angry when you're too nice to them because then they don't feel protected. They feel like you're weak because she'll feel like she has to raise you and she'll lose respect for you. What well, it, it's a conundrum for the nice guy because he, he believes that he needs to make everybody happy, right? <laughs> so, you know, trying to make everybody happy is an impossible task. But a nice guy doesn't know this. He believes that he has to please everybody. So he's a he's a people pleaser. Right? So in his in his relationship, whether he's married or he's just got a girlfriend, he's going to try his hardest not to get in trouble with this woman. Right? He's, he's, he doesn't want to doesn't want to do anything wrong in her eyes, anything that would make him unacceptable to his spouse. He avoids conflict and he just wants, he just wants to get along. Right. So, you know, it's a conundrum for the, for the nice guy. How does he set boundaries without looking like the bad guy to him? Right? How does he how does he set boundaries without coming across as a bad guy? Right? Because his boundaries might actually make the woman upset, make his spouse upset. And he's gonna try to avoid that. So, you know, I, I, I think this is one of those things where, you know, for you to get the results that you want as a as a as a man. You have to stand on your boundaries. First of all, you have to know who you are, right? And then you got to be able to stand on, on those boundaries that you set between you and, and your spouse so that she cannot just walk all over you. And who cares if she's happy all the time, right? Does she make you happy all the time? Probably not, right? So part of, part of the thing, the solution is that you know, as a man, you have to you have to know what the bigger picture is, and then you're doing everything in your power to secure that bigger picture. And you know, she's 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 coming along with you while you're working towards that goal, whatever goals you you guys have set together, right? But women will test you. Women would all they'll always test you. They, they, I made a video. Um, a while ago that I was talking about how I, I compared women to children <laughs> and I said that women and children were similar if you can if you can raise a, a, a kid you can definitely make any woman happy right in, in the sense that women will test you they, they'll push the boundaries they want to see how much they can get away with and if you as a man you don't understand that 
and you're you're a nice guy you want to you want to make her happy she's going to keep pushing that needle and pushing that boundary over and over until she breaks you and believe me when she breaks you she's leaving okay because now she knows that you cannot protect her you're not you're not even worthy to be in her presence right so it, it is so important that you don't you don't fall for the for the trap or for the trick and you know be that nice guy that always tries to please and always tries to make that woman happy all right Truly one is who we can trust makes good decisions, but the one that doesn't trust his own decision making and we have to do it and he comes across as being nice, essentially he's seen as weak. I don't know what man needs to hear this today, but you do not owe your ex-wife shit. <laughs> shit, <laughs> you don't even owe any of your exes any bullshit. Let me explain. There are women out here that will file for divorce with the expectation that their ex-husbands are always going to be there for them either emotionally, financially, or whatever the case is. They want their ex-husbands to be the fallback guy. They want mm. their ex-husbands to be the one that they call when they're having a rough day or they're in a fight with their new boyfriend. You have to understand that that's why it's so easy for some of these women to get divorced is because they automatically think that you as an ex-husband or an ex-partner is always going to be there, especially if you have kids involved. You can absolutely be there a thousand percent for your children without ever having to be attached to your ex-wife. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> you know what? I mean, she she is she is absolutely right. And and I've reacted to this to this young lady's um videos before. Her points are very logical, right? Because as men, you need to have a backbone. You need to know where your balls are. And, and they need to be th those balls need to be intact at all times right we we cannot go out here waiting i mean maybe that's not the the goal initially but if your woman decides to leave you 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 it's so important that you're not waiting for her if she's leaving you to do to do her own thing you also go this way and do your own thing right because she's leaving you because she doesn't respect you now for whatever reason why she doesn't respect you you have to figure that out and you have to figure out how you can learn from that not necessarily to gain her respect again to be in a relationship with her but that is an information that is very important to you because i want to know why she lost respect for me in the first place and what do i do to become to be better right everything is a lesson and you got to be humble enough to learn from everything that happens to you in your life right so you got to take this information and now you build yourself up you correct the mistakes you you build yourself to a place where when she sees you again <laughs> she's going to want you right and it it might not be always be what this lady is saying here that these women are using this man as placeholders, it might not necessarily be that way. It might just be that they lost respect for a time. And then when they saw that these men have stepped up their game, they got the respect back. They understood what they what they left or what they what they missed. Right? And then they understood that, okay, well. I got to come back and I, I have to do better because this is not the type of guy that, you know, falls down and stays down. This is the type of guy that, that is actually going to take me somewhere, right? It's going to guide me. He's going to lead me, right? So sometimes that's what it is. That's why they come back. Other times it's exactly what she's saying. These women, they, they just want that break. I want a break. I got to go and find myself. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that as a, as a, you know, as a 30 year old person, if you tell me you want to go find yourself, I will let you go and find yourself. I would even buy you the plane ticket for you to go find yourself wherever you want to find yourself. 
Because at 30 years old, if you don't know who you are, you need to get out of my face. Right? You need to start doing work internally. Every day you need to start figuring out who the hell are you? Because at 30, you don't know who you are. You got to go find yourself. Even at 25, I'm going to tell you what, like, you don't know who you are. What are you looking for? What did you what, where did you lose yourself? <laughs> what, what, what version of yourself are you looking for? Right? Is, is, is it clearly is not the version that's going to benefit me. This is the version of yourself that's only going to be of benefit to you. Meaning that's probably not you. Right? You're just going to fill your life up with mundane pleasures. Fill your life up with things that don't, you know, superficial things that actually won't add meaning to your life in the long run. That's what people say when they're trying to find themselves. So, you know, it's important that as a man, you got to know what type of woman you're, you're with. And if you're with a woman that's trying to play these games with you and trying to use you as a placeholder and she wants to go find herself and run, roam the streets and then tries to sneak back in with you for free without doing any extra work, it's important that you don't let that happen. All right, let's keep going. I say this because this is why there's so many bitter baby moms out there. It's because they cannot comprehend their ex moving on from them. They want them to be swooning over them. They want them to be pining over them. They want them to be obsessed with them while they go out, f as many dudes as possible, have situationships, do all of this bullshit and basically have an open relationship with the ex-husband while she gets to move on and you're still sitting behind and still being emotionally attached hoping that y'all get back together. Stop doing that to yourself. You don't owe your ex-wife shit. You can take care of your kids without ever doing anything more than that. Amen. Goodbye. I have been so hesitant to post about this uh, for two reasons. Okay. Number one, I don't like negativity and I don't want to be like the bearer of bad news. No, no, no. Go uh, ahead. Number two, Let I didn't want to believe it. But after doing so much research and uh, getting a lot of messages, uh, I'm going to just deliver the unvarnished truth to you guys. Speak. I'm just going to lay it out straight. We're in a dating crisis. <laughs> not basically we are. That's what's happening. So. That's not really shocking news. We, we've we been in a dating crisis for a long time, sweetheart. Like it's, I, I don't know, since the 90s, <laughs> we've been in a dating crisis. But let's hear what you have to say. Let me look at my research here because I don't want to mess it up. So men looking for casual dates and our relationships is down 50%, mm. five zero since 2019 not yeah. since 1970 since 2019 right before the pandemic down 50 percent they're not fucking looking which means if you're a woman looking they don't fucking give a shit so as this trend continues by 2040 45 percent of women 45 percent of women between the ages of 20 and 45 will be single and childless based on this trend let that sink in for a moment. I you know what? I, sorry to pause the video right there, but I, I'm thinking too, like, if if things are getting worse, right? The dating scene is, is getting worse. I don't know how what the future is going to look like for the young ones. They might find a way around it. Who knows, right? But if you're telling me that the, the stats predictions for the future are, are saying that 45% of women in the future will be uh, single and childless. What is the percentage of the men that will be single and childless? Because right now I'm pretty sure that it's, it's very high, right? It's, it's high, already very high. So in the future, if you're saying 45% of the women are going to be single and childless, I'm going to assume that at least 65, 70% of men will be single. Meaning that the women that are going to be in relationships 
will be dating the same man, will be having babies by the same man, right? <laughs> or these single women will be trying to steal other people's husbands away from them. So if, if these stats are, are true, then I would say we all need to buckle down. Women, you guys have to buckle down. Man, you guys too, okay? Because we're, we're talking the decline in, in society, right? Society is better when everybody cooperates and men and women have families. That's, that's the backbone of society. When you, when you take that away, trust me, society goes in, in, a, in a hole, all right? So let's keep going. I'm going to talk a lot more about this. So if you're interested in this topic, hit the follow button because I've got a lot more of information, a lot more to share with you guys. So let me get this straight. So many modern day women think that they're the prize because basically they're a functioning adult and they pay their bills. <laughs> like congratulations for paying your electric bill. I guess that means you deserve princess treatment. <laughs> Meanwhile, these women are ill-mannered, don't know how to communicate. They don't know how to take constructive criticism. They only uh, know how to focus on negative behaviors instead of positive behaviors. Superficial trauma that they constantly project onto other people they're selfish and entitled and expect everyone to cater to them while they give nothing in return they have poor time management they don't have any priorities in place they don't know how to focus they don't know what they really want in life which is why they dabble in everything and sleep around mm. they prefer negative attention rather than no attention at all their idea of positive friendships is how many followers they have and their reputation online is more important than who they are in real life dismissive to anybody's feelings or opinions if it doesn't validate them wait 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 just, just sorry to pause it there i don't know why i'm even apologizing this is my damn channel <laughs> i'm gonna pause it wherever i want okay um if you're paying attention to everything that she is stating here a person who cannot accept criticism a person who looks for validation all the, everywhere all the time through social media, through all their friends, they like drama, right? They make everything about them. The list goes on, but what type of person do you think that that is describing? If this is the modern woman's behavior, then we're talking of a bunch of narcissists, right? Covert narcissists. That's what this. That's what she's describing without literally this, without saying the word. Right. This is this is this should be one of those videos of tell me you're a narcissist without telling me you're a narcissist. That's exactly what what she, what what is happening here. Right. Because modern women have been. Given so much attention by men that they feel so empowered. They feel so powerful to to command attention, to command tell you what to do, when to do it, how to do it, what to say, when to say it, right? You, and you dare not say anything negative or constructive criticism to them because then they'll just shut you down, right? That means they're not the prize anymore and they have to be the prize at all times. So if you haven't caught up to what she's saying, she's describing a narcissist. So it's important that as men, we filter through the, the grain and filter through the sand to find diamonds, right? We're not just looking for any woman just because she's friendly to you or she, she has a, a nice body. She walks a certain way. She, she, she talks a certain way. That means that she's wife, wifey material or because she's sitting next to you, right? There, there have to be qualities, values in, the, in these types of women that makes you go after them, right? Not, not anyone can meet that quarter anymore. We, we're elevating. We're raising the standards now, all right? That's what we're doing because a lot of these women are, are coming in looking the same, sounding the same, acting the same, and we are choosing them based on those false pretenses that they put forward, right? But when a person is so selfish and making everything about them, they like drama, they like toxic behaviors from men, from their friends, it makes them feel better. They love the drama, 
That is narcissistic behavior. Let's keep going here. Bully people while simultaneously preaching women empowerment, but yet they have so much to bring to the table because they're a functioning adult and they pay their bills. Make that make sense. It okay, doesn't. Bye. Dating is an entirely an economics problem. Mm. It is economics. Economics meaning there, in my days when I met Nibel, she was one of 14 friends I knew. Okay, the economics were very straightforward. Of the 14, Nibel was the one that matched my soul most. She was the most beautiful woman on the planet for those 14 and everyone else. And so <laughs> I said, I'm after this one. Today, from a supply and demand point of view, you're talking about 14 million people at any point in time that are in a market that is so complex. It's like the NASDAQ market. Yeah. Literally, if products are on the market instantly all the time and and the game is an, a game of economics sadly the more supply there is the less the value of a product right so right, if right, if right. you simply said to yourself you know this camera is now going to be we're going to make 14 million copies of it because it's easier for the factory to make 14 million copies than to make 4000 every one of those copies to manage to sell 14 has to go down in price because otherwise pe only people who uh, can afford the 4,000 will buy and then you'll be left with the other 10. <laughs> and that's what's happening in the dating and, and romance market is that there is so much supply out there that nobody values that relationship anymore. Everyone is like, okay, I'll try anyway. You know, it is it gonna take a couple of dates, but then that's not what happened. You go on a couple of dates and then it's a nice kiss and then you stay a little longer and then, you're, right? And, and all of that, basically you realize that you've spent seven months of your life to figure out that this person is not interested in children. Right, For example, right, right. if we take that example. The way to do it is the other way around, is to go to the Shelby Cobra Club, go to the place hmm, where people are interested in you as their dream and then a hundred percent of them will be chasing you and your price goes through the roof everyone goes like oh, oh my god finally i found my shelby cobra i'm going to go behind that shelby cobra i'm going to do whatever it takes whether it's commitment whether it's you know uh, changing myself a little bit or whatever that is to earn the right to be with my dream right right i i, I get it in, in other words what he's saying is that the market is saturated with the same thing. There's no value in anything. Sex is, is very cheap. It's easy to get. You see somebody for, you speak to someone for two hours, sometimes even less, maybe 30 minutes, and it's time to get it on, right? Everyone is on the same playing field. Whether you're talking about the, the social media world where an ordinary person, ordinary woman can get the attention of an NBA, NBA uh, basketball player, can get the attention of a, of, of a Hollywood actor, an ordinary everyday woman, right? It doesn't, it doesn't work the same way all the, uh, easily for the, for the man, right? An ordinary everyday man would not get the attention of a Hollywood A-lister, right? It, but it works. It works like that for the woman. Now the thing is this: if if things are very easily attainable, it, it the meaning also diminishes, right? How how often do you do you see a, like you know the the, the car uh, Hyundai Genesis? compare it with a bmw i'm pretty sure the hyundai genesis has more luxurious luxurious things inside of it than than a, than a, a bmw costing the same the same price but most people will go for the bmw because there's a name to it right there's there's a name to it so most people will go that way so when 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 you 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 you, you raise your value raise your standards to a certain point, right? You work on yourself and make yourself more valuable. That way you can be seen as, as more valuable to more people and they'll, they'll reach out to try, to try to get you. But if you are the same as everybody else, what is the point, right? It, it doesn't matter. So people have to first see the value in you. And I think 
that is what we that is probably the the biggest problem in, in today's uh dating market is that everything everyone's the same no one's working hard to elevate the their personality elevate who they are as, as human beings we we're living in at a time now where we can post a fake life a fake profile on, online say this is who we are when in reality, that's not even close. People post pictures that they're the happiest couple in the world. And then the next day you hear that these people are divorced. So I, I guess we have to go back to the drawing board and really make ourselves more valuable, not just to us, but to everybody else, right? And and that way, this this dating game can start to be repaired slowly and the family units can, can 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 form again and people can come together and actually do things that are uh, uh, very important and and profitable to them all right anyways i am out of here let me know what your thoughts are on these videos that i just showed you and catch me in the next video and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel help a brother out all right i'm out of here take it easy have a good night and peace out.